Hello everyone. Uh, we have been seeing on this series a lot of basic stuff on how to work with different modifiers on Exim. But one of the parts that makes Exim really, really powerful is the expressions. So this will be a series based on how to work with, with basic expressions to get different results. At this moment here, I have a really, really basic room that the only thing that has it's a noise, a clump one and a clump two. So it's actually just clumping, clumping again, and noise. So it's nothing special. And we're going to start defining different aspects of the actual room. First, how to create an expression and how expressions works on X. You have on each of these icons here, the possibility to create one expression. In this part, we can see that the mask has a value of one and could be linked to a map. A value of one means that everything is covered or a translation will be a yes. So this is positive, it has a value of one. If I put here a value of zero, everything is going to disappear. And I, I put a value of 0.5, I'm going to have a 50% of the density applied. So this is how it works. A value of one is going to be full density. That means that you can control all the information with numbers and data. Let's take, for example, the length. The length of this room is based on roomable splines. That means that it's based on the length of the actual roomable splines. If I put here a value of three and reload the hair, you can see how the hair grows accordingly to the actual length of my hair. But what happens if I want to have a noise and make some of them slightly longer, but just some of them and not all? Well, you have to add what we call a random expression. And it's a really basic expression. At this moment, you can see here, if I hit here, that the texture for the length is a map. It's called map. This is a way that you declare a map and has the description root, room and length. So what we are seeing here, it's that it's looking for the project where the project is set. It's looking for the description folder. It will be exit on the project settings, exit uh, collection, description name. In this case, is uh, the collection will be for base. The description will be for base deer. That is the direction, the grooming tool. And then it's going to look groom and it's going to go to length and inside it's going to find the actual folder. So let's see, we have the project, right? And this is our project here. Let me copy this thing. And we are here. Now, we told that we were looking at the project folder. So this is my project folder. I'm looking at my action folder. So this is the action folder collections. I have a lot of collections because this is the folder where I create all the lessons that I have in on Patreon or here. And we are looking for what's the name of the collection? A uh, four base. So we need to look for four base. It's this one here. For base deer, there is that description. And room is the second folder. Length. And this is a PTEX file that generates the actual length and based on the actual length of the groomable. So that's what it's saying. You, we are looking for this root, this path, and you can even declare a local path for this and it's going to work. The only problem is that if you share this with a local path, it's going to look for the local path. So be aware of that. But we know that this value here, it's equal to two. And we, are, we didn't paint some special values here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy paste this expression here and I'm going to delete it and put a value of two. I hit apply. You can see now that my link has the same value of two, but I can change it accordingly here. So value of two, value of three. And you can see that the actual length, it's the same on the groomable splines. If I change that direction, the actual direction changes accordingly on the groom also. So you can see how the groom bends and change the direction when I groom. But 
if I change the actual length, the groom is not following the length. Look, five. Now the groom doesn't follow the length because it's not following the map. Let's go to a value of two here and let's put the value of two again. Now, what happens here? I need to add what we said at the beginning. I need to add a random expression or just some of them. I need them to be slightly longer. Well, you come here, click the box and write rand. This is the basic way to make it. And this expression, you can see how Exen is helping us. And it's saying, okay, you need the float rand. So this is value rand. And you need to open brackets and float mean and float max. A float, it's a full number, or it's a number that has just a binary value. So just one, two, three, 0 0.1, 0 0.3. It's not like a vector. So what we need to add here, so I open the, the parentheses, it's a value. We already know that we have a length of two. So I want to have a value around 1.5 as a minimum value, right? You can see here the description. And I want to add a max of 2.5. That means that my actual length is going to be like this. If my actual value, it's a value of three, of, of two that we see here is this one there. Now I'm going to use 1.5 as a mean value and 2.5 as a max value. And it's going to iterate between both values randomly. Now that I have that expression, I hit apply and you can see how now it's completely different than when I had a value of two, sorry, two, right? Now, this is slightly good, but it's not that perfect because we cannot control the actual thing. Even if you, you need to hit say apply or save, and then you need to come here and change it if you want to, but you need to do it like this. So it's, it's good, but it's not perfect. And you can see how we have a different scaling on all the parameters. Uh, seven minutes. Okay. This is the basic expression. I'm going to stop the lesson here and I'm going to put a little bit more of how to work this and make it slightly more complex and easier to manage for the next lesson.